You decided to join the 3D printing universe and you're already dreaming about the first prints you're going to make. But then one question arises. Filament or resin? The wrong choice here can cost you a lot, not only in money, but also in frustration. So in today's video, we're going to dissect these two technologies. We're not only going to change the differences, but we're also going to give you the knowledge so you can make the right choice for your objectives. So stick until the end, because this decision guide that we have put up for you is going to eliminate all your doubts. So let's go. First of all, the internet is full of opinions, forums, videos, articles. It's an avalanche of a lot of different information that often confuses you more than it helps. You listen to people saying resin are for pros or filament is unable to give you the right details, that resin is toxic, filament isn't, but what is myth and what is true? The fear is real. You're going to invest a lot of money on a machine and you might find out that it does not fit for what you want to make, or worse, you can actually find out that you don't have the space, the safety, or the patience to deal with the process that comes with the machine that you have picked. So today, beyond the obvious, we're also going to talk about the cost that no one tells you, the infrastructure that you really need, and the secrets that can actually change your workflow. Your 3D printing journey starts with the right decision, and we are here to make sure that you take the right one. So for you to make the right choice, it's fundamental that you understand the essence of each one of these technologies. Even though both build objects layer by layer, the methods are fundamentally different. FDM, aka filament, are the most popular 3D printers these days. But how do they actually work? You get a spool of filament and you insert it in the 3D printer. Inside the 3D printer, there's something called the hot end. Inside the hot end, this filament is melted until it drips to one tiny hole, also known as nozzle. This nozzle moves it around, depositing the melted plastic layer by layer, but then the cooler makes it hard very fast. So think about a robot designing a line in 3D with one continuous line of hot glue, building it from the bottom all the way up. Now let's talk about the resin printers, which are called SLA, DLP, or even MSLA. Resin 3D printing looks like magic and it works with a trick called photopolymerization. Basically, these printers, they have a container, which we call the vat, and it's full of a liquid resin that gets hard when it's exposed to ultraviolet light. So when it's immediately exposed to that light, there is a chemical process that makes it very hard that solidifies it. So basically, this base gets lower than inside this liquid resin, then the entire layer is projected in that UV light, and in about two or three seconds, it hardens the entire layer at once. So differently than the filament printer that kind of draws inside that specific layer, the lights get projected all at once and it makes the entire layer one single time. After the layer gets hardened, the base goes up a little bit and the process gets repeated in the next layer and then it goes over and over and over until your print is finished. It's like we're piling up thousands of really thin photos forming that final 3D printed object. And there are also different types of resin printers. If you're interested, we can make a video explaining each one of them. So comment down below. And now comes the first battle, details versus layers. The most visible difference between the two technologies is in the final print. The resin printer is the undisputable champion when we talk about fine details and that really smooth surface. The resolution of a resin 3D printer is defined by the size of their pixels and the layer height, which can be as low as 0.025 millimeters. So when we compare to the FDM 3D printers, they usually work with layer heights that can be as low as 0.1 millimeters all the way to 0.3 millimeters. So that is almost four times smaller than the smallest resolution we get in FDM. And that obviously gives you a more detailed print in the end of the day. The LCD of a resin 3D printer can be compared to the screen of your cell phone, for instance. And it has a very high resolution that can go all the way to 8K, literally. Whereas the nozzle of the FDM is more like the tip of a pen that you draw on paper. It's thicker than the resolution that you can get in the resin printer. And that fundamental difference is what makes resin the ideal choice for applications that demand a statical perfection, like tabletop gaming miniatures, jewelry, dental prototypes, and any object with complex textures or very small text. Even though FDM technology is able to make high quality models, their layer lines are very often visible to the naked eye. And this is what divides a lot of people's opinions. For some people, the resolution that the resin is able to achieve, it's the only acceptable one. 
and for others, the one that we can get on the filament, it's more than enough. And now let's talk about the second subject, the speed. So about speed, things get a little bit more complicated and this is where the resin really shines. So for a single model, especially if it's a high model with a small base, the filament printer can even be faster. The way we measure the speed in the filament printers is millimeters a second, which is how many millimeters the nozzle can go on one single second to design each layer. But the great trick that the resin has is that it cures the entire layer at once. So the time it takes for each layer is exactly the same, regardless of the size of the thing that you are printing, or if you're printing one miniature or 10 different miniatures. In other words, to do one miniature or 10 takes the same time, limited only by the height of the tallest object you're printing. That changes everything for those who want to make tiny little objects. Why when filament times add up in each model that you put in the build plate, on the resin printer the time is the same. So for those thinking about selling miniatures or make little kits, resin gives you a big productivity advantage, allowing you to do batches of production that would be impossible in the same time with the filament technology. The material battle. The choice between filament and resin for 3D printing also depends on how you're going to use the printed model. Filaments like PLA, PETG, or ABS are usually more resistant, which makes it more indicated for prototypes, functional models, and models that do need to withstand a little bit of impact and heat, even though the addition between the layers is not as resistant as the resin layers. Regular resins, they are able to give you incredible details, but they're way more fragile. This is what makes these types of models better for you to look at than actually handle them. There are special resins that are more durable, more impact resistance, but for high mechanical resistance, filaments like ABS and PETG are still far superior. However, in the FDM, the orientation of the model that we wish to print is also crucial to keep its resistance. Let me know in the comments below if you wish to know how to better orient the prints on your build plate to make it more resistant. Now let's talk about this sensitive topic, the real cost of 3D printing besides the price of the 3D printer. Resin 3D printers and FDM 3D printers, they kind of have a similar entry level price. However, that can be mis leading when we talk about the resin printers. To understand the true 3D printing costs of each one of these two technologies, we gotta analyze the entire thing, which includes the machine, the materials, the consumables, and any other equipments that you might also need. So now let's talk about the cost of the material. The filament cost is usually a lot cheaper per kilogram than one liter of resin. Also with one kilogram of filament, you are able to print a much bigger volume of models than with one liter of resin. There are a few hidden costs when we think about the resin, because the entire ecosystem that goes around the resin printer has a lot of other consumables that we don't have in the filament printers. We need to use solvents like isopropyl alcohol, cleaning agents, which are absolutely necessary for you to clean your models, and all these solvents, they get saturated with resin and you need to substitute them regularly. So besides the special and very careful way to dispose these things, they also represent a recurring cost on your printing process and a logistic complexity as well. And when we go to the equipment's consumable, we also have the FEP film that stays in the bottom of the vat, which is also a consumable and gets degraded over time, so you need to change it. The LCD screen, which is the heart of a resin printer, also has a limited lifetime, and sometimes you do need to change it, and that change can be very expensive. There's also a few additional equipments. Even though it's not mandatory, a wash and cure station is highly recommended to optimize your workflow and to get better results. Because if you wash it well, if you cure it well, you're gonna have a better overall print also. So all these other costs, they also add up to your initial setup. And when we're talking about a filament 3D printer, it's way more straightforward, but it also has some extra costs. And the first one is the nozzle. These days, 3D printers are getting faster and the material is usually high flow, so we can print at that fast speed. And with that evolution, the nozzles are being developed further as well. They take longer to degrade, but in counterpart, they are more expensive. In about six months, you will have to replace your nozzle. In one single Bamboo Lab A1 nozzle, for instance, is around $11. The humidity control. Humidity is a big enemy when we are talking about the quality of a final print. Materials like PLA, PETG, and TPU, they absorb a lot of the air's humidity, and that can absolutely ruin your print. So that might make you buy filament dryers, some boxes in order to better store your filaments with vacuum, and 
perhaps some silica gel. So that also creates a little bit of an infrastructure cost that if you compare it to resin, it's not that much, but it's still something that you have to take into account. So throughout the years of use, the operational cost of a resin 3D printer tends to be substantially higher and more complex than a filament 3D printer, especially for a beginner with a limited budget. So since we started to talk a little bit about it, let's talk about the infrastructure, the space, and the safety aspects of each one of these technologies. Maybe the most crucial decision factor, which is the less discussed one, is the infrastructure that you need in your house in order to start 3D printing. And the technology you pick will define what's the space and the safety protocols that you should adopt. And if you wanna have a 3D printer, you do need to have a little bit of a lab. To deal with a resin 3D printer, is kinda like building a mini laboratory in your house. And the first thing is ventilation. This is essential and you cannot neglect it. The resin and all the other chemicals they use it in the process, they do have a very strong smell and some toxic vapors. And to breathe, these gases can irritate your eyes, nose, and your throat. And they can be really, really bad for your health in the long run. So for that, the resin 3D printer must never be used in your bedroom or living room or any place really that people stay with. So the ideal is that it has its own space, like a garage, a workshop, something with a lot of ventilation, and preferably with an exhauster that throws all of this air to the outside. You also need some safety equipment. You should not let the resin touch your skin. And this is why you need the plastic gloves and also the goggles. And if you can, some mask with filters. All of these is super important on all steps. It's a mess and it's kind of dirty. It's a process that involves liquids. They can spill, they can go everywhere. And all that demands you to be very clean and very organized. So you got to do all of this constantly. On the other hand, printing with filament is way easier in terms of structure. If you print with PLA, which is the most common material, it's considered to be very safe. It does have a little bit of a sweet smell, which you can almost never notice, and it releases very few gases. So you can use on any room that does have a good ventilation. But if you're using materials like ABS, they do release some more gases then ventilation needs to be stronger. For ABS, the idea is to have an enclosed printer, not only to hold the vapors, but also to keep the temperature stable. Because since ABS contracts a lot, you might have some warping and it's going to delaminate in the middle of your print. Let's talk about the humidity control. As we talked before, the main thing is to have a very dry place to keep your filaments and protect it from humidity. So with all of these things being said, the barrier of entry on resin printer is not only the money, but it's also the space and the Safety. So before you choose a resin printer, you should ask yourself, do I have a place in my house that I can dedicate to have a chemical process with proper ventilation, isolated from kids and pets? For a lot of people that live in apartments or limited spaces, the answer can make FDM the only viable option. Another important factor to highlight is that in resin, the work never ends. The work does not end when you finish the print. The process to transform the raw model into the final object is drastically different between the two technologies. So let's talk about the resin workflow. First, you need to remove carefully your print from the platform still filled with liquid resin. Then you gotta go to the washing process. The piece needs to be washed on a solvent. It could be isopropyl alcohol. Some resins allow you to wash it with water, but still you need to remove all the non-cured residues. And usually it's washed in two different stages. The first is the initial wash that you remove the raw material that's still stuck in there. And the second one is already inside the washer and that happens for you to kind of remove the rest of what you have inside. Then there's also the support removal. Support, they are usually very thin and delicate and they get removed after the wash, but before the final cure. And then there's a final cure. After you have washed and dried the entire model, this model is exposed to a UV light source on a curing chamber. This steps finalize the polymerization of the resin, give your model all the mechanical properties and maximum resistance. Without the curing process, the model will stay weak and kind of gluey on the surface. Now let's talk about the filament workflow, which is simple and direct. To get the model off the build plate, sometimes we do use a spatula to help us, but that's most of the times not necessary. Then there's a support remove. Differently than resin, you don't need to use the supports on every single print. And when you use it, they have the same material 
as the printed part. So you break it manually or using a few simple tools. This process can leave small marks or imperfections on the place where the support touched the model. Now let's talk about the finishing, which is optional and oftentimes not even needed. After you remove the supports, if you have any supports, your model is functional and ready to be used. If you want to have a superior finishing quality, you can send the model to remove the layer lines or even apply a little bit of primer and paint it. For ABS prints, it's also possible to do acetone smoothing, which melts the surface of the model, resulting on a shiny and smooth finishing. So the conclusion, which one should I pick? Pick filament if you want to do functional prototypes, mechanical models, upgrades to your house, cosplay, some decorative items, big objects, and you don't care too much about the layer lines. If you prioritize a process that is clean, safer, with less cost, and a little bit more plug and play. Pick resin if your absolutely priority is the quality of the print and having perfect small details. You're going to print miniatures for tabletop gaming, action figures, jewelry, dental prototypes or visual prototypes. But the most important factor, you do have the safe and dedicated space for the resin printer, which happens to have a good ventilation as well. Also, be aware that you are going to be committing to a much more complex workflow that you're going to handle chemical products as well. Now, the decision is in your hands. And I wanna know, after all of this, are you team filament or team resin? Leave it in the comments below and tell me what do you want to print? If this guide helped you clear your mind, the best way to think is by liking this video and following the STL Flix channel. Also, don't forget to activate the bell and you're not gonna miss the next deep dive that we're gonna do on the universe of 3D printing. Thanks for watching and happy printing.